Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> this week is another double parsha, parshas Achrimos and Kedoshim, and the subject of all these weeks parshas, as Kedoshim suggests, is holiness. Holiness is separating. It's the time we're counting the Sphira. We're three weeks into the Sphira Sa Omer. It's a time where the rabbis say is to develop our lev tov, our good heart, and the gematria, the numerical value of the word lev is 32, and the word tov is 17, and that equals 49, which are the 49 days of the Sphira, which is the same numerical value of the word mida, mem dalad hey, which means midos, the character that we're trying to work on during this time of year. So, and we try to find a proper balance in our midos and to develop the lev tov before we come to the receiving of the Torah. We want to be able to work on certain aspects within ourselves that will make us worthy to celebrate Shavuos properly and to receive the Torah. So, we're going to, uh, one of the key parshios is uh, connected from three, two weeks ago, Parsha Shmini, and it's a uh, reference in the beginning of Parshas Achrimos. So let's take a look in the first sheet over here, uh, going back to Parshas Shmini. Parshas Shmini, we were told in the be- it, it, during the height of the inaugural ceremony of the Mishkan, we were told that the sons of Aaron, Nodav and Avil, each took his fire pan. They put fire in them and placed incense upon it. And they brought before Hashem an alien fire, an Aish Zara, an Aish Zora, a foreign fire that he had not commanded of them. A fire came forth from Hashem and consumed them, and they died before Hashem. Moshe said to Aaron, Of this did Hashem speak, saying, When Hashem said, I will be sanctified through those who are close to me, and I will be honored before the entire people. So Rashi explains. Second source, Moshe said to Aaron, Aaron, my brother, I knew that the Mishkan would become sanctified through those intimate with Hashem. I was under the impression that it would become sanctified either through me or through you. Now I see that they are greater than I and you. So the Torah tells us, in no uncertain terms, that Moshe, not even Avi, were great people. And they were great people who brought what the Torah only calls a strange fire and because of that strange fire, a fire came and consumed them. Now, the rabbis in various midrashim give different reasons as to why they died. It can't just be a strange fire, along beyond the simple shot. And you see uh, just a, a few opinions that we have listed on the handout. One opinion says they never got married. Another opinion is that they entered the sanctuary in a drunken state. Another opinion says they decided a law without taking counsel with the elders to bring a foreign fire that Hashem didn't ask. And another interpretation is they looked forward to the time when Moshe and Aaron would die and they would lead the generation. The measure says, when will these two old people leave and we will take over? There's a lot to be said about this and hopefully in the course of this morning's class we'll get a a deeper understanding as to what's the common thread that unites all these ideas. So to start uh, this um, idea we'll quote from you from the Baal HaTanya. The Baal HaTanya, the first Lubavitch Rebbe in his work Likute Mamorim, chapter 19. He refers to a verse in Mishlei that near Elohim nishmas adam, the candle of God is the soul of man. That's why we Judaism has a lot of candles in our religion. Not necessarily a candle, but a near really is is the is the flame. It doesn't have to be a a wax candle. It preferably should be an oil candle. But the near is the flame. The flame, what is, what is the flame of Hashem? What is this flame? What is this? So it is the Nishma Saddam, is the soul of man. That's why in your sight, we have a, we have a fire, we have a flame to remember this. It's why on special holy days we have these things. So what does this mean? So well, Tanya brings a very, very interesting concept over here. Let's read what he says. 
What it means is that the souls of Jews who are called man, right? We're Adam. Adam is a, is a significant personality. Are by way of illustration like the flame of the candle, whose nature is always to scintillate upwards. For the flame of the fire intrinsically seeks to be parted from the wick in order to unite with its source above in the universal element of fire which is in the sublunar sphere as explained in Ace Chaim. He's getting Kabbalistic now, don't worry about that. Uh, but what he's saying is that fire wants to go back to its root. The root is energy. And the energy root really is a heavenly word from Hashem. So the, the fire wants to go to its root. However, he continues, and although it would thereby be extinguished and emit no light at all below, but once it would leave the wick, it would extinguish itself. There would be no more fire. And even above, in its source, its light would be nullified. And the fire, when it would go above, it would be totally nullified by the great, awesome fire of Hashem. Nevertheless, this is what it seeks in accordance with its nature. The flame wants to leave its source. That's why it's the only thing that defies gravity. Everything else is bound by the laws of gravity. Except by a flame. Because gravity means everything's going back to its source. Anything physical with mass goes back to its source, which is the earth. Fire doesn't really have that mass. It's energy. Energy sources up above. So it, it has a different law of gravity. Its gravity is up, an upward gravity. It's going up. That's where it wants to go. It wants to go, even though if it goes, it will extinguish itself. That's the analogy. So the Balatani continues, In like manner does the soul of man, including the quality of Ruach and Nefesh, naturally desire and yearn to separate itself and depart from the body in order to unite with its origin and source in God. The neshama, the person, wants to leave. Wants to go back to its source. With Hashem who blew the soul into man. That's where the neshama wants to go. The fountainhead of all life though thereby become null and void. But if we do that, it would be finished, completely losing its entity therein, with nothing remaining of its former essence and being, meaning to say, its cessation as a distinct entity, not the extinguishing of the soul. The soul won't get extinct, but it will lose its unique entity as it will be brought in and, 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 and consumed within Hashem's reality. Nevertheless, this is its will, and desire by its nature. So that is why we notice that, that a, a flame flickers. It flickers up and down. Which is the outward manifestation of the paradox of existence. The very attachment to the wick and the oil which keeps the flame alive is also the continuous cause for its striving to die. The oil in the wick caused the flame to flicker upward, which would be the death of the flame. You'd figure, keep it going down. Make the fire go down. Keep the fire inside the little receptacle. Why is it going up? And the up is trying to say, I want to get out of here. So it's a paradox. The oil which provides the life of the flame also provides the flame with the longing and the yearning to die. Because it wants to jump off and go on that. So... How, how does this relate to the human being? That, that's what he's saying. The human being is similar to that. Let's, let's amplify this by learning how, how the, how the Svarma Kedoshim explain a mission in Pirkei Avos. The sixth source, it says in Pirkei Avos, Al korcha aton otzar, Against your will you were fashioned, you were created, you came to this world. Al korcha aton olot, And against your will you were given birth to, you were born. Al korcha atochai against your will you are alive and against your world you will you die so how do we understand the third clause against your will you're alive the fact that the soul was brought into the world already was against the soul's will as the Medrash says the soul never wants to come down into this world before the child's born and against your will you're born so what's the idea against your will you're alive he already says you're against your will, you're born. So what's the mission trying to emphasize? 
So based on this teaching of the Balatanya, the Sfarm write the following. They say, somehow, in every human being, and particularly the Jew, there is an extraordinary yearning for life. We've read all kinds of stories of the pogroms and the holocaust that the Jews have gone through, concentration camps, where there really is no hope and no reason to live, no point in living, where every moment was so painful. We don't have to you know, go over those descriptions. Yet, it's the very nature of the human being to want to live. If he still has retained his humanity. Right? There's a tremendous yearning within the neshama to remain attached to the oil, to attach to the body, to remain alive. Right? On the one hand. As well, on the other hand, the nature of the soul is to simultaneously yearn for transcendence. Is that the word right? Transcendence. Tra transcendence. Because there's a word transcendent. No? Yeah, okay. Transcendence. I'm going to have trouble with that word today. <laughs> Better use another word. Um, Some of us still call this, uh, quote unquote, a death wish. Okay, it is a desire to tear itself away from the constraining influences of the world and to fly off into the arms of Hashem. We're not talking about suicidal people here. People who are yearning to, to get out of this world and to get into Hashem's arms because they love Hashem so much. Right? So, so the Sfarim right, that's what it means. Against your will, you're alive. And against your will, you die. They explain like this. Regardless of what you want, the most basic need of a human being is against your will you will live. Meaning to say, there's something inside of you that's pushing you to live whether you want to or not. Inside of you there's this desire to live. Right? You, you want to live even though the, well, the guy's a terrible life. Still, you want to live. You want to live. You're clinging to life. You want to retain the uh, remain attached to the body in the physical world that's natural that's how Hashem made us and at the same time against your will you will die you die means even when you're alive even when you're so excited about being alive it's so great you're enjoying this world you're, you're throwing yourself into physical things you have nice cars nice house nice clothing you have every reason to be living and you feel so powerfully awake in this physical world attached to the candle all of a sudden from nowhere a person begins to feel a sudden longing for something beyond this world doesn't mean you're going to die but it means against your will you will die meaning over here death doesn't mean literally it means there's something inside you that says that this world is ridiculous just another another rib steak. You know, I've already had it already. Been there, done that. It's it's not everything in life. Ultimately, the person deep down inside has a feeling that you can't achieve true joy in this world. And ultimately, meaning, deeper meaning, cannot be found by things in this world. And against your will, there's something that arouses within you that says that this isn't it. After all the success and all the money and everything, it's still not it. And against your will, you're going to find the need to die, meaning to say, the need to seek meaning with something that's transcendent and deeper and beyond this world, which we see is alive before your own eyes. And it, it, this, this is not it. So that, that's what the Balatanya really means, and that's what, how you would learn the mission of us. This conf a person is conflicted within himself there's two feelings at the same time to live to be part of this world and to die meaning to attach yourself to something that's not of this world again we're not talking about suicide don't make that mistake right so this is what the Sefer Yitzira refers to the mystical term I've just described in Hebrew is called what? Ratzo Vashov Ratzol, to run away, for Shovin to come back. In other words, the soul wants to run away, it flickers, it jumps off the wick. I want to go into Hashem's arms, 
But if, but if I do that, I, I won't be, I won't exist. And then this, but wait a minute, I still want to live. And then Vashal, it returns, it comes back. That's why they say Jews shackle. We shackle, we move, we don't sit still. Right? You can talk to a, 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 a Gentile from England, he could talk to you for an hour and not move a muscle. You know, that, that's the way they are. Whatever, they're trained to be, right? You talk to a Jew, they're never sitting still. You know, when we had the non Jewish teachers, the English teachers, they come up, send the panel to go up to the desk, and we're like this. So the teacher says, will you stop moving? Like they, they don't understand it. You know, says, what are you shuffling for? What are you dancing for? Why does it, because the Nishon is on fire. The Nishon wants to fly out. When you've got an inner force that wants to get out, it, it, your body is, is reflecting that shuffling. That's how you can always tell, you know, if, 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 a, if a person's Jewish or not. You know, you could, you, there are many stories that people in Kirov tell that when they're, uh, trying to reach out to certain people and so like when you, when you, when you teach about Jew and they start learning Gomorrah he says and, and you see this all the time all of a sudden and a secular Jew but he's starting with Gomorrah all of a sudden he, he's shuckling it's like unbelievable he, he's doing like this he's shuckling where's the shuckling coming from? right? if he's not shuckling I'm not saying it's not 100% if he's not shuckling you better make sure that he's really Jewish it could be a giveaway. It'd be something to be concerned about. Maybe there was a face of, of not good conversion three generations earlier. It, it doesn't really have that Jewish soul. <coughs> but you can see it's, it's like, it's like where, where is this guy? I see it all the time. Where, is this, where are they shuckling from? They're not going to shuckle in a lecture. But when he's engaged in learning, then the neshama gets on fire. And all of a sudden, the guy's going like this. So that, that, that's what we're talking about. Ratzov show. Right, so you can't have peace in this world. Either, either you you want to you want to go get close to Hashem, but then again, you want to live. Okay, that's an important idea that we're going to base the whole class on today. Now, the death of Nodav and Avihu, the two sons of Aaron. Again, it's not a hundred percent clear from the Chumash why they died and what they did to deserve to be killed. It was many reasons we gave. And, uh, but one thing you see, one word that's repeated a lot, and I bolded it in the first source. What's the word that keeps coming back? And even in Parsha's Achremos, in the beginning of Parsha, fire. The word fire is repeated very much. Eshara, Vatetse Esh with Hashem. Right. So, <clears throat> they, they, their insides, uh, when Hashem killed them, their insides were consumed by fire. So what's fire symbolic of? What's the message of the fire here? So the Baal Shem Tov, his students, they say the following. That fire represents, like what fire is, what, what do you do when you see fire? Fire's crackling, it's moving, it's jumping, it's, it's all over the place. So a person on, we say a person's on fire, what does that mean? There's drive, there's motivation, there's energy, there's excitement, there's longing, right? And the rabbis say, whereas it's a mitzvah to bring a sacrifice on the altar and have it burnt, but the fire, the, but first we have to wait for an indication from Hashem that that's what He wants. So the problem with not of an view, and we'll expand on this idea, it's a very important idea to expand on. They explain this, they brought a fire from below without a corresponding fire from above. We'll explain this idea. Usually you want Hashem to bring a fire down. When, when, when the Mishkan was finally consecrated, Hashem brought a fire down. They brought their own fire. So the, 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 the rabbis say they brought a lower fire without a corresponding higher fire. A fire below without a fire above. That fire is called an Eish Sora, a strange fire. When you bring a fire below without a fire above, and I'll explain what that means, that's called an Eish Sarah. That's a strange fire. That's not the kind of fire Hashem wants. We'll explain this. So the Or Chaim HaKadosh in, uh, in this parsha, it's the eighth source, says where we find other tzaddikim when they died, Moshe, Aaron, when they died, how is it described as? What was it called? It was, it was called the kiss of Hashem. <coughs> This is where the original kiss of death came from. I mean, that, it was a pleasant kiss. 
their souls, what does it mean when, they're, when they died with a kiss of Hashem? Meaning their soul was literally drawn out by Hashem, right? With, with a death kiss. In other words, like the, a kiss is such a, uh, a, a touching, close, intimate feeling. You know, as opposed to yelling and screaming and kicking and fighting. The people who die yelling, kicking, screaming and fighting till the end because they don't want to leave this world they don't they, <laughs> but here it's like it's just a natural simple going out and Hashem draws the soul out Hashem says it's time it's time to show Allah come here come here Zizekind and just come here mm, I'll hug you and just take you with me in my arms and take you with me that's the way you know we'd like everybody to go in this world that Hashem is taking us out and uh, and the tzaddikim they wait for this kiss from Hashem to remove their souls but there's other tzaddikim who are impatient and they're driven by their fire and their longing and their excitement they have an extraordinary initiative a tremendous drive for holiness and they're not satisfied to wait from the fire from above as it were because that day when Hashem will make it come is the kiss of death that's the most remarkable unification the human being has but it happens at the end of your life then Avia says no we're searching for the kiss we're going to kiss him first now what does that mean exactly in other words they knew they were going to die one day and they know that ultimately this world isn't the final destination and, but, they, but they were filled with such an idealism and such an excitement that they were looking for the kiss. Not saying, well, when the kiss comes, it'll come. But they're looking for that kiss to even leave early. So they brought a fire from below when there was no fire from above. And that's called an Aish Zara because it was completely on their own. It wasn't uh, a response for what Hashem asked for. It was their own initiative. In other words, the fire that destroyed Nadav and Avil, the actual fire, was really the very same fire which we mentioned earlier. This intrinsic desire of every soul to leave this world. The longing to leave this world. That flickering flame when it flickers away. So there's such a thing as a fire that completely fills the heart of a person, which is the longing to be rid of this world, to be detached from and flicker away from this world. This is what is the rabbis mean when the Torah says an Eish Zora Asher Lotzi a strange word that Hashem did not command. That's what the Orachim HaKadosh says and we need to explain this a little bit more. What does this mean? And we have to make it very practical. This all sounds very uh, abstract. But you'll see very soon it's going to be very painfully practical. Okay? So don't get lost in the abstractness. You still have to start abstract and then you've got to make it real. Okay. <coughs> so the Arizal, to go one more mystical step in the ninth source, he says, the sin of Naravia, the mistake is called Hafradas Yesod Abba Mi Yesod Ima Eloi. Separating the qualities of Abba, Father, from the qualities of the supernal mother. Now these are all mystical terms. You have to understand what the mystical terms mean. And you can see all kinds of interesting things are going to be understood with this. Unbelievable things get understood from this. So Abba, mystically, is the code word for Chachma, wisdom. Ima is the code word for Bina. We'll call it understanding, for lack of a better English word. Uh, intuition, whatever. But we will, we will explain what this means. These are code words. They're mystical code words. Abba, which is the father, is Chachma, Ima, is Bina. Now, Chachma is understood as fire. Fire. Uh, that point in a person that's ignited when you have that raw desire, when you're filled with an idealism, you have a new idea, Chachma, a certain wisdom. Yeah, this is my idea this would be an amazing thing to do that's exciting oh wow I just thought of this great idea oh I'll make millions or I'll change the world I'll save the world a little chachma a little wisdom you, you hear a bit of wisdom from someone wow that's amazing I'm going to take this somewhere and do something with this it's very exciting it shakes you up completely and that gets you on fire it's the Abba quality that puts things on fire 
right? So, um, in a classic sense, we're going to go with the traditional sense over here, okay? Let's say the Abba, quote unquote, he sits in the base medrash, he sits in the study hall, his mind is immersed in learning, he's learning Gemara, he's learning Musa, he's learning Kabbalah, he's learning Hasidus. He's filled with the enthusiasm of the idealism of this perfect world as the Torah writes it. Right? He's learning all this Torah. I'm amazing. He's so excited. Say so he's got the chokhm. He's got the idea. Right? So uh, and if you notice, you go to a, you go to a, go to any kollel, go to a base medrash, a really good. You, you see that the guys are screaming at each other. They're not that they're not angry with each other. They're excited. It's honest that they're jumping around. It's like you don't just see them, you know, sitting around. It's not like, you know, not like a library. Shh, I'm talking just to think quietly. I'm not saying there isn't a place for that. But, you know, in yeshiva, it's, it's deafening. And, and it's alive. It's like the place is on fire. It's like, Mama's on fire. It's like you feel it's on fire. It's a tumult. It's a, a noise from the hallway. You, you hear the din. It's like, and you look at the guys. This, that, all that, all that, all that, no, it's not right there. All over the place. And then when they come to some conclusion, wow, they're on fire. Okay? And that's a tremendous thing. While the father is sitting in the base medrash with his great idea and his blood is bubbling with excitement. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, in, in the home, there's a bunch of children asking for supper, one in the bathtub, one hanging from the chandelier. You know, it's, it's, it's a different world over there, right? Now, who deals with that world? That's the Yisod of Ima. The Yisod of Ima that comes along with the Bina, that comes with the understanding. Because Bina, the word Bina comes from what word? Livnos, Bonet, to build. The power of the mother is to take the idealism and the fire of the father, the fire of being Jewish, and to translate it into the practical, simple details of life. So, in other words, the father comes home, and let's say in the yeshiva he learned, for example, the Maharal's explanation of the Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, of the Exodus experience. Goes through the Maharal's deep Kabbalistic understanding, going to Mitzrayim, he's on fire. Oh, it's amazing. Such a good interpretation, this and that. He knows the deeper meanings. He may even say it over to the kids, and the kids are in awe of the father. Oh, that was a deep, deep idea. But the mother is the one who tells the children when, let's say, one child makes fun of another and is crying. It's more often the mother, not the father, says, Yingala, what are you crying for? You have to be your own person. You can't live in a way where you're subjected to the whims and fancies of other children. You can't be upset one day when one kid insults you and the next day you're happy because the other kid shared a snack with you. you got to be your own person. Now, who usually does those kinds of talks? It's usually the mother. I'm not saying never the father, but generally it's the mother who has those long talks. So the father can be filled with the ideal that he took out of the yeshiva about well, leaving Egypt the way the morale understands it but the mother draws the wisdom into practical simple details of life so the father's an expert in the morale the mother's telling to the child you know don't get stuck stuck in what other people are saying and be your own person that's the bina of the chachma that's the practical application of being out of, going out of Egypt means not to be constrained by others the real freedom means you're free and you don't, you're not impacted by what other people say and do. That's down in this world, the way you understand how to make it happen. Now, of course, the world's cross and the father will sometimes be in a motherly way and sometimes the mother will be in a fatherly way. But these are the general fun foundations. So the Abba deals with the world in Torah, high ideals, that's the fire. The Ima, she connects the fire and instead of something being left as a theory and hovering above the world, out of this world, the mother's job is to build the world, use the fire, draw it into the vessels that can receive it, and something should come out which is good and practical and healthy and right in your life today. Okay. So far so good? Okay. So now it comes out. The Asoda, the Abba, really means let's go back to the code words of Pirkei Avos, against your will you must die meaning to say 
right? And, and, and so the ima is against your will, you must live. That's really what the father and the mother give. They, they give us both. In other words, the father desired to die, what does it mean? The, the ideal, the flame reaching upwards, the excitement of the fire, jumping away from the candle, going to the transcendent world, going beyond. That's his world. He provides that excitement, which is important to have. Against you, you'll die. Not to die, but I, I really want to go beyond. But the mother says, but sweetheart, we still got to live in this world. We have to build the world. Hashem doesn't want us to disappear. Hashem, you know, wants us to, doesn't want us to flicker off the candle. If he wanted that, he wouldn't put us in this world to begin with. He would have left Hashem is up in the world up above. So I know you want to flicker. The husband is to flicker out. The mother, father, and the mother is to flicker back in. Let's, let's remain, let's get attached. So the mother says, if Hashem brought us into this world, it's Hashem's desire, the purpose of creation, to take all this enormous energy, all this Chachma, the Yisod of Abba, connect it to Bina, and with that power, draw things down in a practical life. In other words, we live in this physical world with Torah and mitzvahs. We observe the Torah and mitzvahs with the fire of the Father, and using the physical tools that God gave us. Do you understand? You understand? That, that, that's what's happening here. So uh, quite often you hear all these stories of yesteryear where the husband's very happy that they live in abject poverty. <coughs> He's sitting and learning as all this pitach on Hashem. And some of the wife has to sell the candlesticks to put food on the table. <laughs> the husband saying, what, what do we need this world for? We can just live with Hashem and all this. Which is, which is a very good attitude to live with Hashem. But to the extreme, that is mamish nothing in the house. So, so the Bina says, that's very nice. And we, we, I, we really want all of us to have this enthusiasm of Hashem. But Lamaisa, Shabbos is in another day. And we have to have something to eat for Shabbos. And quite often, now I'm not saying this was necessarily correct. But in all, most of the stories that you hear, somehow the wife made Shabbos happen. Somehow she davened Hashem and is willing to give away her ring, or this and that, and then another bracha came, and, and uh, it, it, the fire is great, and, and the father would just take them all up to Shemaim right now. But the mother said, no, no, we've got to be back down on earth, we've got to live in this world and, ma and make it real and make it happen. Okay. So, and that's what it says in Proverbs as well, the tenth source, Shma Bani Musar Avicha, Val Titosh Toras Imecha. Listen, my son, to the Musar of your father, but don't leave the Torah of your mother. So the Zohar says, Musar Avicha is the written law, and Toras Imecha is the oral law. Which means to say that the teaching of the Father, what does the Father bring to the table? The written law, which really also means prophecy. Because the prophecies, the Tanakh was written through prophecy. We well, know that prophets were not allowed to introduce halacha. The job of the prophet, the Abba character, is didn't come to teach us how to actually learn Torah. If you look in the Navi, you can't learn halacha out of the Navi. You can't learn halacha out of Navi. Uh, the Navi doesn't teach you how to it's filling. But what was the job of the Navi? It was to wake up the Jew. Take Hashem's Torah and, and scream and yell and cry and beg and excite the Jewish people. That's what prophecy was all about. The prophetic experience is when the Navi had prophecy, he'd fall to pieces physically, literally, except for Moshe. He'd fall to pieces with his connectivity to Hashem. His entire physical existence would be shattered by the experience of the prophecy. That's great for a moment. And because the prophecy means, right, the will to die to go beyond this world to have that moment of that prophetic experience that's Musar Avicha that's what the Father gives you the Torah Simecha the oral law means yes we take this sublime feeling of prophecy and now we're going to say now after the prophetic experience how are we going to eat supper how are we going to put food on the table how are we going to make sure the kids get a good education Let, let's, let's bring this excitement that's wonderful now, but we've got to put it into this world and live it and put on tefillin with excitement also and do mitzvahs in this world mundane mitzvahs with excitement right to draw the light of that prophecy into the practical world that's the world of Bina understanding building so the men you know they, 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 they have all these great ideas but somehow it doesn't translate necessarily into raising the children properly 
And then the, the mother's job is to, like, your, I, your excitement is beautiful, Abba. Now, you know, will you learn with your kid now, please? Oh, I'm busy in this. No, no, you just sit down with the kid now for half an hour. And but I got it's right now, half an hour with excitement. Take that excitement and I teach him a few seconds with excitement. Some of the mother has to get the father ways to, you know, to, because the father's so excited, she wants to stay in yeshiva all day long. So no, no, you got you got to sit down with the and sit down with the girls a little bit and, and, and do as well. You know, the father's happy to sit at the shop and sell sings mirrors. And the mother says, no, so maybe say it's for everybody, you know, and and uh, and make it a little bit more of the experience that they should have, right? So hopefully, you know, they they blue mesh the husband and wife together and make a good partnership with this, right? So, you know, like Navua, the father, you know, they're not so excited about the details, you know. You don't ask a Navi, you know, do we say Yal Vyovan Rosh Chodesh? You know, the Navim were taking these little cards and putting them in the shul, remember to say Yal Vyovan Rosh Chodesh, you know. They they were way out. But then you need the practicalities, yeah, you do gotta say Yal Vyovan Rosh Chodesh. Okay. So now so what happened to Nana Vil? Let's come back to Nana of Navi. No, no, view. They brought a strange fire that God did not command. What is the strange fire? So what they're saying is they got swallowed up with their will to die, meaning they had the Yisod Abba, they had the foundation of Abba without the Yisod Ima, without the foundation of Ima. They had the Chachma without the Bina. They had the excitement without the practicality. And that's what all the reasons of why they died all fit into this. First reason says they never married. Do you understand? What it doesn't mean just physically they didn't marry. It means existentially they didn't marry. They weren't able to marry and have children because they had such a fire of enthusiasm that was homegrown and that didn't come from what we would call the Shulchan Aruch. It was a desire to bypass the normal ways of following the laws of the Torah and to seek the kiss of Hashem without following the step by step waiting all those years. And they say, you know, we can't get married because they didn't connect to the Yisod Ima. They didn't connect to what the female brings to the table of practical reality. They were in the world of Chachma, the ideas, the enthusiasm and all that. And let's just go straight to Hashem, finished. Well, let's cut all corners. Uh, but he said, no, 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 no. You gotta take that fire was meant to be to, to ignite the world below. And they said, what are we going to wait? Why do we have to hang around here to light the world below? Let's just take our fire and go right to heaven. And just go right there. And that's Hashem, 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 Hashem never commanded that. Hashem says, I want you to be excited. I want you to really feel close to me. But you know what? Now take all that feeling and now make it happen down here. Make everybody just as excited. Put on the phone with excitement. Give tzedakah with excitement. Raise your children with excitement. You know, so what, what, what do I have to bother have a wife for? They say, what do I have to have kids? What is this? I already got all the excitement. What do I got to bother with anything else? Let me just go right, right to the end and finish. Right. So that, so, so uh, you know, instead of taking the fire and making the mitzvahs and everything in this world so exciting, they said, let's just go take the fire below, as it were, without the fire above. That was their mistake. And that is why in this week's Parsha, what does Hashem say to Aaron? He says, Bizos Yavo Aharon El Kodesh. With this, Aaron will come to the holy, Velo Yamus, and he will not die. Zos is male or female? Yeah. Zos is female. He says, with this female quality that I'm talking about, that's how you go into the temple. Not without this female quality. Now, Ruf Cook, in his letters, I have some of it written down. It's very hard to translate perfectly in English. He writes, he wrote almost uh, almost a hundred years ago. He says like this. I'll, I'll read the Hebrew. You got the English there. It says he says Korah Dover. Sometimes it happens. Yechidi school of very exceptional people. Show be'emes bali musar. They were on extremely extraordinary levels. Really great spiritual people. Dunim Atsan Al Kola Olam, they measure the whole world through their looking at themselves. For Ratsul Hakish Sakates, and they want to speed up the redemption. Levatala Sakhyuvi Sakfuim Umasim Umaras. And they want to nullify the permanent obligations and the traditions of the Torah. In other words, there were people, Lahavdal, like Jesus. That's who he's referencing to. People like Shabtai Tzvi, false messiahs, who were were, were not 
a small minded people of diminished souls they are people of great spiritual energy unbelievable powerhouses they said Krishna better than we ever will say Krishna Yashka's Krishna was better than mine in, of what he understood, what it meant, he was, he was a student of the, the Tanoim, his mamish, big, big man, right? These two were on fire, mamish on fire. They had this fire, but, but look where their fire took them. You know, they didn't, they didn't attach the Ima with the Abba, they didn't connect it in a practical way. And that's where everything got distorted. You, it's very interesting when you look at the story of Jesus who do, do, who's not in that story a relationship with a woman is never there or if it's there it's distorted Shabtai Tzvi was a big Kabbalist people thought he was the Mashiach but he never got married he once did a whole show he got married once he, they were waiting for the Kala to come the Kala came was a Sefer Torah so I got married to the Sefer Torah okay finally there was political pressure he got married to it, 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 these people, these people, they don't get married, they don't have kids, but these are all on the positive hand, they're on fire. They have the Yisod Abba, they have an Aish, right? But they want to skip all the other steps that are necessary to bring the Mashiach, which are the details of life. Raising families, teaching little children to put on tefillin, you putting on tefillin, you doing those mundane mitzvahs that are down in this world, but if I, if I'm up there. What I got to bother out here? No, no, no. no, no you you got to make it all real down here. So they were interested in the Yisod Abba, but not in the Yisod of Imo. So now, you know, and it's interesting. This plays out in many ways. If, if, if you look at the, 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 the whole, all American heroes until very recently, right? What was the true American hero? You look at all your favorite television shows from the past. You know, uh, let's let's have very nice par uh, thing. Let's say Bonanza. If you remember that from the six, 50s and 60s, right? Mm -hmm. What did you have? Four men and Hop Singh. There were no women there, right? And you knew whenever one guy would fall over a girl, she'd be out by the end of the show, right? The American hero, right? Gunsmoke, face all, and, and throughout you go throughout Batman and Robin. That the whole thing is always the man. Okay, there could be a, a little flirtation with a woman, you know. Uh, you know all these old shows, Ben Casey, all these things, you know, all these, always what, and Doctor Zorba, but no woman, never a woman in there. It, what you couldn't be a hero with a wife. I don't know. Let, maybe you could pick one that I'm off on here. <coughs> Superman, no wife. None of the, that. The American it was the man, not the woman. Never, never was. Right? Because what do you need? It, it, it's all, it all follows Christianity, all these ideas. It's the man without the woman. That's all. You're out, you could be on fire, but you don't make it in, in a practical way down here. You don't come back, bring the fire back here and make it happen down here. So if Cook continues, he says, But always you find their mistake with all kinds of pains and suffering. The mistakes of the false messiahs, but all kinds of pains and sufferings. And then eventually the world gets back to its normal pace. We come back to the old fashioned traditional way of following the customs, going to shul, putting on tefillin every day, and going back to the simple way of life. To, to, to grow dafka only in a very gradual way the gradual way step by step every day putting on fill and giving stock every day raising the children every day using your bina to incorporate this fire into this world a slow slow gradual process that's the one that Yiddishkeit always survived through not the exciting flash in the pan oh he's going to turn everything around it's going to be amazing it's going to be great it's going to be this he's on fire Let's just go cut to the chase, skip all the processes, let's fly, fly right off the thing. He says that the mistakes always, it always backfired at Yidden, every single time. You never had a leader who was a flash in the pan that succeeded. The other ones were slow, 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 until they finally, finally worked on themselves, so they finally made it. 
And that's what he says. He concludes, I don't have it on the sheet. He says, Osem Nishyonim Shashub Aaron. This experiment that the sons of Aaron did, Yulanu Lamore Derech, it's a bitter lesson. Bios Yodi Mayach Ryusim Shalmahir is to know what the end will be of people who are quick to get the fast spiritual solutions. If you're impetuous, if you have spiritual impetuosity, and let, I'm going to go right for, right for the top. And, and you leave out the practical steps that are down below, you see what happens to such a person. So this experiment taught us the risks and the dangers of living in this kind of a hurry. Of seeking to die when Hashem really wants you to live. Of trying to bypass the normal methods of Yesod Ima. You have to have the Ima. What's the Ima? Ima is there every day. Day in, day out, you get up in the morning, you got a problem, the ima's always there. Used to be that way. The ima's always there. What about, uh, wait till your father comes home, but the mother's there till the father comes home. Right? And the husband has, I got this great idea. It manifests in so many ways, right? Guys, I got a great idea. This guy wants to sell me a piece of real estate in Florida. We're going to make millions of dollars. It's unbelievable. I'm ready to write the check right now. The wife says, wait a minute, let's just see what exactly is going on over here. And let's meet the guy and let's see what's going on. Let's ground this a little bit. And they find out that the guy's a charlatan and he's ripped off a million people. You know, and how many times does that happen? where the husband's ready to tank the family assets and, and if the wife is able to, to hold on to him they don't lose it right that, that, that's all part of that that same nation right so the slow system of bottom up is always one that succeeds right and, and you reach a point where you do connect heaven and earth which is the ultimate goal so yes you need this soul you need this idea you very much need this idea of against your will you will die you, you want to have this fire and you want to wish, I wish I could be in Hashem's arms right now and therefore you know, I'm going to take that excitement and put it into what I'm doing down here as well and, and, just, and just when you feel you got to die and you got to leave this world and you got to fly out of all restraints Hashem reminds you against you well you will live your goal is in this you have these great ideas you're, you're a big scholar guess what you got to get married you have to get kid, you have to have kids you have to find a way to pay for tuitions. You got to find a way to change. You got to find a way to take uh, got your fire and make me part of the mundane world because that's the way I want things to be. And that's where you're going to have the biggest fire that I want. So, so now you can understand all these other reasons what the rabbi said why they died. They were drunk. What does it mean they were drunk? They were filled with this higher light of Abba. They, they had too much Abba in them. Too much excitement without the Ima part. They didn't take counsel of the elders. What does that mean? The elders are usually called miyushavim, people that are settled, with more experience. They take things easy. They relax. They don't make decisions right away. You know, young people are always rushing. They don't ask advice. You don't see counsel from the Ima and Abba connection. So they didn't connect to Bina, which older people get Bina. The rabbis say, you know, again, when they said, when will these old men die? Meaning, you know, when we won't have to be troubled by this will to live. You know, old people, they want to live. More so than young people, if you ever notice. It's this idea, we've got to stay grounded. We've got to still stick around. When all these old people die, we don't have to be so grounded anymore. And we can just explode and bring Yiddish to the highest levels immediately. That's not what Hashem wants. When Avram took Yitzchak to the mountain to give the Akedah, what did he say to Yishmael and Eliezer? He says, you know, we're going to go up, and then it says, then it says another word, it says, Veshuvu Aleichem, Veshuvu and then we'll come back to you. Why do you have to say, and then we'll come back to you? So the Hasidic firms say that Hashem wants that even if you get to the top of the mountain, and you did the binding of Isaac, and you couldn't get any holier than that, Mamish up there, you said to come right back down and talk to the guys with the camels, and be integrated into that world. You went all the way to the top of the mountain, you, you flickered all the way up, you were in Hashem's arms, but you know, you don't stay at the mountain, you come back, you go to the regular people, and you try to get them excited about Yiddishkeit and being proper people the same way. So the rabbis tell us, we're almost done, that uh, there are four people, we've got to get to Rabbi Akiva, we've got to put Rabbi Akiva into this time of year, because this is the time where his students died. The rabbis tell us that four people went into a pardes, into an orchard. It's an allegory to a tremendous mystical place. Four great rabbis they went into this place 
three of them didn't come out normal, didn't survive the ordeal. Right? Only one came in in peace and went out in peace, and that was Rabbi Akiva. In other words, they, these people were all Ratso, they all went out, they flickered off the thing, but three of them did not have come back in a healthy way. One died, one went crazy, one went off the path. They did not, once you have all this unbelievable, sublime understanding of life, it's so hard to be a regular person again. I had all this amazing stuff and now we're just going to wash the dishes? That's not for me. So one said, I can't live this way. Died. The other one went crazy. The other one said, I can't be a Jew. Sometimes too much information isn't good either. Once you're so... It's like the person is overqualified to live. But Rabbi Akiva was able to come back with no problem. He understood. You go up, but you got to come down. Rabbi Akiva was the Rebbe of who? Rebbe of who? Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Of Lag Bomer fame. All the Kabbalah that we have, all the mystical teaching comes from Rabbi Akiva, who gave it to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Now, Rabbi Akiva lost 24,000 students. And what did he do after that? He started again as an old rabbi. He built it back up. Because what? He had a desire to live. Right? He went to, to the south, picked five students, reestablished Torah. All the Torah we have today comes from his coming back for his will to live. He could have wanted to die like the others. You know, I said, I put my whole life into this. I, 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 I had, had 24,000 students. Can you imagine what kind of come down it was then? Can you imagine you're rushing with 24,000 students? Do you, know, you know how great you are? You lose them all? Then he said, forget it, I'll go with them. Wouldn't there be a great, I want to be with my students, let me go with them. He says, no, no, we'll start again. He started with five. <laughs> Can you imagine what, 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 what a loss of esteem people would feel? So come on with five too. It's not a problem. So that, that same Rabbi Akiva, like he, he, he knew he still kept that fire. And because of that fire, we have the whole Torah Shabbat Pell. The whole oral law is from him. Everything we need to have down in this world comes from him. So this, and, and as well, you know, how did, how did Rabbi Akiva become Rabbi Akiva? Ah, this is the only romantic story in the, in the Talmud with his wife, Rachel. The romantic story with Rachel. Rachel, this daughter of a rich man, she saw qualities in Rabbi Akiva. You know, why are we talking so much about Rachel? What do we need? I don't know. Very few Tanis in the Gemara we know about their wives. Very few. And here we have more stories about Rochel than any other woman, that, as far as I know. Why? Because she's the Esodima. She, she, she took his fire, but kept it grounded. These amazing ideas, that's, that's wonderful, now let, let's make it real. Right? So ultimately, he had the perfect Abba match with her, and it, with, with that fire, he could bring it into this world and bring it into a world that we can learn all this Torah with the Kabbalah, the out spacey stuff, and bring it real into this world. And that's what the Ishbitzer Rebbe says in Source 13. He says the word Zos is a mystical reference to Malchus, I'm not going to get into why, which means the fear of Hashem. As we say also, Isha Yiras Hashem, a woman is a God fearing woman. So, the first time we find Zos in the Tanakh is by, by the woman. It says, Lezos Ikareisha. To this one he will call woman. Uh, when he finds his wife, Zos upon this time I found the right person. Zos is always a reference to the word woman. As Torah says, and he built the woman, Vayiv, and he built the woman from the man, and building is from Bini Asera. So the woman's quality to build and to construct and things in this world, it comes from this female quality of Zos. And that's what Hashem is telling Aaron. You want to come into the holies? It's Bezos. It's not forgetting about the female quality. You make it real. You're just not, you're not just going into the Mishkan, bring your own fire to go to Hashem and say goodbye to the rest of the world. When you go into the Mishkan Yom Kippur, you're bringing the whole world with you. Everybody's problems. Everybody sins. Everything that's going on goes with you. And you have to figure a way to take that Michigan experience and now bring it back to the people. And make them on fire the way you're on fire. That's the reason you're allowed to go. You want to go to the holiest place get the biggest fire? Is we plan on bringing some fire back. If you don't plan on bringing fire back to the, to, and bring the female component of practicality and to build the world up, you have no right to go and have this tremendous spiritual 
journey away if you're not planning on coming back and bringing it in and making it real into this world over here. Bezos Yavarom. That's the only way, way you're allowed to come into the holiest places if you plan on coming back. Now, meaning to say, now let's try to get this uh, a little bit more practical now. Okay, it's all very nice. Right? So, meaning to say, in a nutshell, you can't go with your natural feelings into holiness. It's not a question of how you feel. It's a question of, of, of making it real in God's world. So, you know, what if you have a feeling, I have a, I have a fiery feeling that I should say the al Hanisim prayer on Lag Omer. You know, it will inspire me. Oh, I have a fiery thing. I want to put filling on on Shabbos. Or a woman wants to bake a challah on Shabbos. I want to have a fresh challah on Shabbos day and I will make a challah on Shabbos. I will feel much more spiritual by doing that. Right? I'm, 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 I'm on fire. So what's wrong with that? That's an a sora. That's a fire God didn't command. Didn't command this. Enthusiasm, excitement, and fire could be there. It's fantastic. The Yisod Ava is fantastic. But without the Yisod Ima, the Yisod Ima says, what are you doing? It's not up to you to bring up a fire that God doesn't ask for. 